Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the structure of the human heart. You should then be able to describe the pattern of blood flow through the human heart. In a previous video we saw that mammals, including humans, have a double circulatory system. In a double circulatory system, the oxygenated blood is pumped from the heart to the lungs, where oxygen diffuses into the blood. As the blood passes through the lungs, the blood pressure falls. The oxygenated blood then returns back to the heart and is now pumped around the whole body. In the body tissues, oxygen diffuses from the blood to the actively respiring cells. And finally, the deoxygenated blood returns back to the heart. So as you can see, blood passes through the heart twice during its journey through the circulatory system. In this video, I'm going to take you through the structure of the human heart, whereas in a later video, I'll be discussing the cardiac cycle. In other words, what happens when the heart beats, including the pressure changes that take place in the different chambers. I'm showing you the structure of the human heart here, and it's important that you learn this. Now, the first key idea you need to understand is that the heart is always shown as if you're facing a person. So the left-hand side of the heart is shown on the right-hand side of the diagram, and vice versa. Now, the heart is formed from cardiac muscle and has two completely separate sides. The heart consists of four chambers. The top two chambers are called the atria, and these have relatively thin muscular walls. The bottom two chambers are called the ventricles, and as you can see, the ventricles have a much thicker muscular wall than the atria. The atria are separated from the ventricles by the atrioventricular valves, or AV valves. The left AV valve is also called the bicuspid valve, and the right AV valve is also called the tricuspid valve. These valves are attached to tendons, which ensure that the valves open in the right direction. Now, the right and left sides of the heart are completely separated from each other by a wall called the septum. The septum prevents any blood from passing directly between the two sides of the heart. OK, we're going to take a look now at the blood vessels of the heart. Deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium through the vena cava. Now, the vena cava has two branches. The superior vena cava brings in blood from the head and upper parts of the body, whereas the inferior vena cava brings in blood from the lower parts of the body. The deoxygenated blood is now pumped from the right atrium to the right ventricle, and the right ventricle now pumps the deoxygenated blood out of the heart to the lungs through the pulmonary artery. In the lungs, the blood becomes oxygenated. Oxygenated blood now returns from the lungs back to the heart in the pulmonary vein. The pulmonary vein brings blood into the left atrium. The blood then passes into the left ventricle, which pumps the blood out of a large blood vessel called the aorta. The aorta transfers the oxygenated blood to all the parts of the body, including the head. Now I've shown the movement of blood through the right side of the heart and then the left side. But you need to understand that the right and left sides of the heart contract at the same time. You'll notice that the left ventricle has a thicker muscular wall than the right ventricle. That's because the left ventricle pumps blood around the whole body, whereas the right ventricle only pumps blood to the lungs. Looking at the pulmonary artery and the aorta, we can see that these blood vessels contain valves. And again, we look at these in detail in the video on the cardiac cycle. Now, there's one really important blood vessel which branches directly from the aorta, and we can see it in this model of the human heart. This is called the coronary artery, and this supplies the heart muscle with oxygen and nutrients. We'll be seeing the coronary artery again when we look at cardiovascular disease. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe the structure and blood flow of the human heart. <laughs> 